Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the second of the workshops on our integrated care system for the Black Country. Uh, I'm Jonathan Fellows, the chair designate for the Black Country Integrated Care Board, and I'm joined again today by Mark Axel, who's the interim chief executive officer designate for the Black Country Integrated Care Board. And as with the first session that took place on the 28th of February, we're recording this workshop uh, and putting the recording on the Healthier Futures, Futures website for people who can't be with us today. Uh, and as before as well, if you have any questions, please put them in the question and answer box um, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of this presentation. And if we run out of time then, then we'll be putting all of the questions and all of the answers onto the Healthier Futures website as well. So in this workshop, what we're looking to cover is uh, a quick recap on the previous session, which looked at our system and its development, how it's going to be different from what's gone before and some of the steps that we're already taking to improve health and care. Uh, we then look at some of the health challenges that we face uh, and the priorities that we've set both in response to those challenges, but also in response to the asks of the NHS long term plan. We'll look at how we intend to make a difference to the people that work with us, to the people that use our services and to the people that live in our community. Then we'll give you a brief update on the integrated care board developments before we get into the questions and answers. So to recap briefly on the previous workshop. Our integrated care system will be known as the Black Country Integrated Care System. I think we can move on to the next slide for that, hopefully. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, the integrated care system uh, are a partnership of all the health and care organisations within uh, our Black Country system. Uh, and the idea is that they'll come together to deliver much more joined up and better services to improve the health and the care of people who both live and work in this area. And one of the lessons that we saw very clearly through the COVID pandemic uh, is the level of support which needs to be joined up across local councils, across the NHS, the voluntary sector, community organisations, all of whom really worked together uh, and exceeded all expectations through the pandemic. And we need to capture that and carry on using that uh, to start to look at how we can address health inequalities and improve general health and care. So this builds on uh, the, the, the uh, papers that were set out by NHS England. Uh, our, our integrated care system will be known as the uh, Black Country Integrated Care System, and it's got two key elements. There is a Black Country Integrated Care Board, um, and that really leads on looking for integration and collaboration across all of the NHS partners that are providing services within uh, our Black Country, uh, and then an integrated care partnership and that includes not simply the NHS organisation, but all of the partners that have expertise and can contribute, uh, and in some cases are probably better placed to lead on developing an integrated health and care strategy for the black country. So councils, the voluntary sector, housing associations, the fire service, all sorts of partners that can really help us with that. Some things, we will need to do at a system level. We have a population of nearly 1.3 million and some things it's sensible to do at that level to service that number of people. So such as the collaboration between our acute providers, it makes sense for them to look at how they can improve the consistency of the care they provide and remove unwarranted variations and get consistent clinical standards. Some will be place based uh, so looking at Dudley, Sandwell, Walsall or Wolverhampton as a specific place and focusing on their communities. Um, and some will be uh, at an even more focused level of a neighbourhood. So how do 
Uh, how does primary care operate across that neighbourhood uh, or provide personalised care? Now, one thing we really need is to hear from you on how you think our system can work best and to really start to make a difference to people's care and to their lives. So if in the chat you can put any thoughts that you have about what good integrated system working looks like for you, that will be great. Uh, if you can mark those comments with the number one, that will also be really helpful. Um, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but you can probably expect to be marking other comments with twos or perhaps threes later on in the presentation. So at that point, um, I'll hand over to Mark uh, to take you through uh, some of the, the sort of, uh, people and health challenges that we face. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan, and good afternoon, everybody. And this system will be as successful as everybody's contributions. And today, we, just in the chat, we're not going to put anybody on screen. We really do want your thoughts as we ask those questions. So in the chat, and it can be anything depending on you know how you've arrived at this session today, please, please do put what you think good integrated care and an integrated care system would, working would look like for you. And it can be based on your experiences of care, it can be based on the role that you do, it can be based on the organisation that you represent. And as we go through, we'll publish them and we'll pick them up. Equally as we're presenting, if you've got any questions, pop those in the chat as well. And at the end, I'll go through and answer as many of them as, as we can. The last session we had, we had loads of questions, which was brilliant. And of course, we will publish a recording of this and the Q&A on our Healthy Futures website, as Jonathan has said. Um, the next part is really to talk about the most important part of this, which is our people, our population, our black country population, just over 1.2 million people across the black country. Because the whole aim of what we're trying to achieve with these set of reforms is to deliver a set of health and care services that are seamless, that enable, enable people to tell their story once. You know, how many times have you or your family been involved in giving care, receiving care, where you've maybe received a visit from one particular professional and told your story, then gone to the GPs and told your story again? So, and, and how we join up care in a more integrated way. And most importantly, focus on some of the wider issues that we know can determine whether you have good health and good outcomes or not. So this slide really is a, is a snapshot of our black country, over 1.2 million residents in the black country. 50.6% of those are female and 49.4% of those are male. And that is more or less within a couple of percentage points, smack bang on the national average in, term, in terms of some of the Office for Nas National Statistics returns that we see. All local authorities are above the England average for the people of age 0 to 15. The England average for percentage of the population in that age group is 19.2%. But as you can see from the four summaries of our four different areas of the black country on the slide, that varies significantly between each of the areas and all of them, I think, are above that average and actually some of them are quite a significant way above that average for 0 to 15 year old Sandwell in particular who is some three nearly three percent three and a half percent above that average and what we're trying to get across here I think is a message and it links to the structure that Jonathan's just um, described to you is we want a system that is responsive to all population groups do the right things for a population at a black country level, bring clinical and care standards up to a, a kind of standard that we're all proud of. But then nuance that to recognise that each area of the black country, be it at the four boroughs area we've just described there, or going even further down into our neighbourhoods, you know, and GP practices and primary care, know those neighbourhoods really well. What is it we need to do differently to represent and provide good health and care in each of those populations. 
And you'll also see there that Samwell, Walsall and Wolverhampton were below the England average for people aged 65 years and over, while Dudley was above the average. So the national average for 65 plus is 18 and a half percent. Sandwell at 15 percent, Dudley at 20.4 percent. Again, huge variation in, in population in terms of its mix and its outcomes. And we'll talk more about outcomes in a moment. Next slide, please. But the one thing that is fantastic about our black country, it's one of the reasons I enjoy working in the black country, my family came from the black country, is it's huge diversity. There is so much talent, diversity, vibrancy in our communities that we really need to tap into and support. And you may hear me saying that and think that's quite a strange thing to say, what we're willing to, wanting to tackle, which you know, COVID shone a light on the impacts uh, that health inequalities can have and inequality in general on the way people access care. But our experiences in working closely through the last two years with diverse communities is the brilliant connection they have to communi communities and population groups and the sheer vibrance of the talent uh, that we have across our, our black country population. So you'll see there in the four boroughs of the black country, a huge level of diversity. When I saw this slide a few days ago, I think we are going to pull together some sort of visual that shows across the black country where our population originate from, because that brings a different set of experiences, a different set of backgrounds and beliefs, which we should be celebrating as a system, but equally making sure our health and care services recognise that, support that and work closely with our communities to deliver care in a way that's responsive to those backgrounds. Next slide, please. So this slide is quite a small one and if you're watching it on a laptop, you may not be able to see it all. So I'll explain it to you because I think even if you can't see it all, it's something that um, I think is fairly self-explanatory. So across each of our furrows, boroughs, we have a number of ways of measuring um, health and healthy life expectancy and our directors of public health and their teams are absolutely brilliant in being able to provide information and data on exactly what that means. So what you've got there is a, a kind of a series of health challenges or health measures across each of our four boroughs. So all of the predictors are in order. So as you look at them for Dudley and Warsaw on the right hand side, they are all in that kind of same order. And the bars depict centiles one to 100, with red being the worst and green being the best. And as you can see in many of the indicators across all of our black country boroughs, many of them are, um, for example, pushing up towards the, the top end of kind of the challenges that we've got. And some are increasing in terms of the level of challenge that we face, some are, uh, reducing, which is great, but there is a, a large and significant number of health challenges that we need to tackle. Healthy life expectancy varies that very top indicator between each of our four boroughs. So if you were to look, for example, at Dudley in the top left hand corner and Wolverhampton in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that while both of them are red, there is a difference between the two. If you look at the kind of in next second line down, which is index of multiple difference between Dudley and Warsaw. And you, when you look down all of them, there are things that one borough is doing slightly better than another. And that this is the aim really about us learning from each other about what we can improve, jointly tackling things that there it's an issue across the black country. But equally supporting each borough to make sure that we are starting to tackle some of these because some of these will have direct impacts on those individuals ability to access health but to enjoy good health as well. Next slide please. So the, the gap in life expectancy and healthy life expectancy between the black country and England is driven by a wider set of determinants, our health behaviours and our lifestyles the places and the communities we live in and with and how we access our health services. And now more than ever, and I think we've had some good examples in the black country that have shown us the way on this, 
and I think talking to partners across the system, both in health and care, we are absolutely up for taking the learning from what we've done already and growing and expanding our approach to these wider determinants. So we absolutely need to progress initiatives aimed at supporting healthier lifestyle choices, mental well-being, some of the socio-economic and environmental issues. And we've led the way already. For example, um, the Black Country has been leading the way in some work with the Combined Authority and the Department for Work and Pensions around supporting people with long term conditions into employment. It was at one point part of Europe's largest randomised control trial test to see which model worked best. And it's great to hear that the Department of Work for Work and Pensions want to extend and continue that service and actually want areas of the country to learn from the black country. Because we know, and it was in some of those measures that I've just described to you, that employment can change a person's life. It means that they are able to reduce social isolation. They can contribute to the economy. They can live a more independent life. It's good for their mental health. But equally, there's a payback the other way in terms of being able to contribute as a health and care system to local businesses. So, for example, by putting people into employment, that generates e economic wealth for our system. But equally, we can work with those employers to support their wider workforce on mental health and mental health awareness. We know that in some of our place based partnerships, they've got housing, for example, around the table. And our housing colleagues make a huge contribution already in terms of supporting their tenants with their health and well-being. I know from talking to various housing groups that they tell me they're often probably the first people to spot if there's an issue with somebody's health and well-being, if somebody's getting behind with their rents, you know, they're not seen out and about, if they're living in supported accommodation. They are probably a good example of where those early indications of poor health and well-being are starting to come through. You look at what the fire service have done over many, many years, actually, and I think there's a lot to learn from the fire service in terms of the approach they've taken, where many years ago they decided to really put a focus on prevention, to do more in their communities. Many of them have got community cars now and they'll go out and visit people or people will send in requests for visits and they're not just there replacing their smoke detectors, they're talking about their health and safety possibly their well-being, but we don't routinely bring all that information together to form a picture around an individual and the life they are leaving, leading. I mean, you look at the supermarket industry, they, yeah, they know everything about you when you walk through the door. They know your buying habits, they know which aisles you're most likely to go to, what offers you're most likely to expect. They use that data to really drive how they deliver a service to you. But we don't as yet bring all of those different partners together and use all of their information in a way that says for that individual or that family or that community, there's a challenge there that we need to jointly address. And certainly the fire service will tell you they've seen a huge reduction in the number of house fires and the number of significant calls they need to go to because they focused on the prevention agenda first. And in their view, the wider determinants that will drive that better life and healthier life expectancy, improve lifestyles and behaviours and all of the wider determinants that come with it. Next slide, please. So this is quite a visual one. Um, again, we, we will make the slides available and this is what if the black country were or what were 100 people. So what you've got on there is in each of our columns, the four boroughs and I really like this visual um, and using public health information, what we've done is broken it down and said um, for each of the boroughs, what if the what if that borough were 100 people? So. Um, I can't read some of these myself, but for example, if you look at the third one down, which is children aged 0 to 17 or overweight or obese in Dudley, nine out of 100 would be in that category in Sandwell, it's 11. Orsall it's 10 and Wolverhampton it's 10. If we use a, another example uh, towards the bottom of the screen, um, let me pick one out. 
people who are living in the most deprived areas of the country, 27 out of 100 would be the measure in Dudley, 53 out of 100 in Sandwell, 48 in Warsaw and 48 in Wolverhampton. And whilst those numbers there in some examples don't look hugely different, this is just a cut shot, a cut of a population of 100. And actually when there are some 10% swings in some of these outcomes between our different boroughs, that if you were to scale it up to the population of the borough, shows there are significant differences based on where you live in the black country and the experiences that you will have that we need to address. And the two parts that Jonathan has just described to you, the Integrated Care Board and the Integrated Care Partnership, both have a role in that. The Integrated Care Board needs to think about health and to a lesser extent care and how it's developing and delivering services. And it needs to over time and as quickly as we can start to understand the performance of those health services against some of these indicators. One of our requirements as an Integrated Care Board is to make sure with all the raft of KPIs that you know, key performance indicators targets that we have in health, that we are cutting them by our population base so that we truly understand in a deeper way that it's not just a single key performance indicator measure for Dudley as a borough, that we understand it for the different parts of our population and is there difference, differences in performance? Are people having a different experience based on where they live and do things to address that? The Integrated Care Partnership, which for me will be the, the, the organisation that will drive some of this wider determinants, needs to develop, first of all, in its first year, a strategy around integrated care. So how are we bringing health, care, housing, all of the partners that we, th that we want to bring together? And what is our strategy for addressing some of the um, inequalities that you can see on this screen? And what I like about this example, and there are others as well, is it really brings it home in a quite clear way, the differences we've got to tackle, the differences we've got to challenge. I really like that if the black country are 100 people because it brings it down into what I think are memorable and very clear measures of how we need to improve. And one of our challenges will be to get and pull all that information together and drive that improvement. That won't happen over one year, possibly two, but as a system, we need to be continually striving and measuring ourselves and checking back with communities on how this is improving. How does it feel? There's a lot of work, there's a number of events going on at the moment around engagement with patients and patient groups. We genuinely have to create that link to say, are we doing the right things? And does it feel different to you in those vibrant and diverse communities that I've just described to you in the earlier slide? Next slide, please. So your second question would be, is what would be your priority area based on your experiences or the role that you do and the challenges that you see and face for improving the wider determinants of health? And it can be anything. The opportunity here is endless when you think across everything the way we live our lives based on what you think feel what you see what be your priority area for improving the wider determinants of health and if you put a two next to your um, answers we'll go through them in a moment i think what i'm going to do just there is pause there and go back to question one and see what responses we've had in the chat so i'm just going to run through some of them so question one was you have to excuse the background noise if you can hear it Question one was, what does good integrated system working look like? A huge thank you to everybody that's posted a comment in the chat. So some comments, I'll pick up a few. Good ICS system is where everyone owns the patient and does not pass on responsibility. Absolutely, this is about trying to create a system without organisational boundaries, where, as I've described, you tell your story once and you're clear where you're, uh, you're pa you are on that patient or care patient journey. People introducing themselves as working towards improving health and care rather than introducing themselves by organisations. I think that's a brilliant challenge. People treated in the most appropriate place and way regardless of organisational boundaries. 
place at the forefront of integration with system integration dealing with everything that place cannot horizontal acute integration is a good example of that so for those that you maybe don't know what place is place for us is our four areas in the black country warsaw dudley samuel wolverhampton and the majority of the things that we need to do to tackle health inequalities to tackle some of the determinants i've just described absolutely need to be done at a place level because that's where the partnerships um, probably are more local to the individuals and the population that we represent. But it's really clear looking across the plans that our health and wellbeing boards have across the four places, there are things that we can come together and be strong at a black country level. But certainly in tackling wider determinants of health, I would entirely agree. A common understanding of both the system and place challenges, thank you. Uh, how do we manage sharing care when we struggle to share data and have complex data sharing rules? Absolutely agree with that. Um, I vote avert organisational self-interest disappears. I would agree and that is I think part of the mindset shift that integrated care has to bring about that organisations are not in competition with each other anymore. It's about working together in an integrated way. Access to patient record care plan by all providers, and we're certainly working towards that one care record as a system. Good link to computer data sharing, which is a similar theme. Uh, there's a number on data. Place first with ICS adding value where it really does. Uh, reduction of duplication of life experience, simple paperwork in a variety of formats. And I'll take one or two more. Good partnerships between all health and social care workforce so information about patients can be shared and interventions targeted as to those who need them. Need clear place and system processes rather than place versus system. I absolutely agree with that. In the past, we've always talked about its place or its system. And in my view, it's and they, they, they won't succeed without each other. Our population needs us to do the right things at the system at the same time doing th the right things at place. And I'll pick one or two more. A person knows who to go to to alleviate their health problem and working closely with multidisciplinary professionals and. The multidisciplinary approach I've seen firsthand can make a huge difference at place in the way people live their lives. If you put the voluntary sector, social care, primary care, mental health, acute colleagues, community staff, and even more partners in a room, you tend to then have a conversation on the individual rather than their individual health condition. You can talk about their family, you can talk about the community that they live in. The examples I've seen where that's happened, uh, the one sector that probably stood out for me was the work of the voluntary sector who really know their local communities well and know what support is out there for individuals who may have a health condition, but actually what would help them to recover from that health condition is maybe less social isolation, more mobilisation, and the voluntary sector can be absolutely fantastic in that. So thank you for these. We will capture these and collect them all together. So keep them coming as we uh, move through uh, the session and we will go on to the next slide, please. So the Black Country Integrated Care System Purpose and Priorities. Next slide. So our, our purpose are really split into four areas. One is to improve outcomes in population health and health care. So as I've described to you, making sure in the way we commission health services, the way we think about health care, the way we deliver care, that we're genuinely focusing on the individual and what is best in terms of improving outcomes. And I would say that we need to focus on what are the value add parts of the service that will improve outcomes and what is the best way to deliver that care at what population base for those improvement in outcomes to be delivered. Some services will need a population base of 1.3 million because sometimes they're quite highly specialist, low volume and absolutely need that level of population to continue to drive those outcomes. Others, a majority will be delivered at a place or borough level, and some will be delivered at neighbourhood level as we strengthen the role of our primary care practices, our primary care networks and 
there's more investment going into supporting roles that are more closely linked to primary care. The next one is tackling inequalities in outcomes, experience and access. So we know through a number of years, many years of commissioning that we do have different models across the black country. So it kind of automatically in the way we work at the moment that there are differences in the way people experience care and their access to care. And a lot of work's been going on already as an integrated care system to start to address that. And what we want to get to, I guess, is a set of consistent standards across the black country, strong clinical standards. So no matter where you live in the black country, you can expect that level of care. That can be waiting times, that can be the age that you access a service, it can be the way the service is delivered. Equally, we want to make sure that that where appropriate that that service is nuanced to support the inequalities that, that particular population faces. Um, somebody said to me yesterday in a session, are we moving to a place where we're going to have one size fits all for all parts of the black country? Absolutely not. Why would we have a service that's exactly the same in Tetnall in Wolverhampton as it is in Sandwell? What we want to do is bring the levels up in terms of clinical standards, outcomes and access, but then where those services are very closely linked to place or to, uh, to primary care or network or neighbourhood level, that they are reflective of the population that they need to support. You would expect that we will continue to focus on productivity and value for money. Across health and care, we only have a finite number of black country pounds as a system. And it's great to see that investment is going into a number of areas of that. And in our 22-23 plan at the moment, we're just working through those investment priorities. But in everything we do, we need to make sure as much of that black country pound is spent on frontline patient care. That we're learning from each other across the, across the black country, the system, in what works well. That if something's working well in, for example, Wolverhampton, it's a clinical initiative that's enabling more patients to be seen, access to be improved. Why wouldn't we roll that off, out across the three boroughs if it's better for the population that we serve? And that everything we do and we're testing ourselves on that whole value for money and productivity aspect. COVID's taught us a lot about different things that we could do. And if you're a member of staff working in the clinical area, there may be things that you think we want to keep that have worked, has worked in the back of COVID. The way people access care has changed, for example, with some parts of the population now preferring to access their care in a, a digital way. We've all got our COVID vaccine passports on our phones and the NHS app, for example. And they are good examples of where you can improve productivity, innovate, but also deliver care in a way for the right population in a way that they want to access it. And then the final one is to help the NHS support broader social and economic development. And I described earlier on that absolutely our role is to work more closely with our partners. We're already working with the Black Country Consortium, which is the consortium of businesses across the Black Country about how do we develop an anchor network of organisations across our, our black country population to support employment, for example, and the wide determinants of health linked to employment. We recognise that we're probably one of the largest employers in the black country, and we want to create roles that are meaningful, that are relevant, that people, no matter what their black country in the black country can have access to. And that again is part of that social and economic development. And of course, we pay a lot of suppliers in the black country. There's something about making sure that we do that in a timely way and where possible, we use local businesses first. But we also know that if people. Do have health and care issues. That that part can prevent them from being at work and that the cost of lost time due to sickness for businesses is huge. We also know that if people are in employment, and I talked about the Thrive programme where we help supporting people with long term conditions to get into employment, that benefits the local economy as well. So the integrated care partnership is about that aspect of what are the wider determinants, what is the social and economic development we need to do with partners that will improve health, 
but also see health and care rightly playing its part in developing our economy as a black country. Next slide, please. At a more local level, we have three priorities, building healthier, happy communities. So our first priority, healthier people, is about improving the quality of services, of which I've already described, placing local people at the centre of their care journey, that they have the right services at a neighbourhood level. If they can't, they access them at a borough level and then for whatever they need at a black country level. That between all of our organisations, we're creating an environment is the best place to work. You know, our workforce, our people are our most valuable and our most valued asset. The NHS is a huge people organisation. We can't deliver what we do without our amazing staff. And we always knew that, but certainly the last two years has shown us that more than ever. So we need to be looking at creating new roles, innovating in the way that we support our workforce. The new generation no longer want to sit in the same role for 30, 40 years. They want to be moving around, maybe looking at dual training. There's lots of work going on around that best place to work agenda. But we have to be thinking about the future and that fit for the future piece is exactly where integration comes in. How do we want to work more closely across health and care services? Next slide, please. So going beyond the long term plan. Next slide, please. So some of you have seen our health secretary a few weeks ago. Uh, made a speech around his vision for how we move forward with integrated care. And really his first commitment was to uphold the founding principles of the NHS, but a recognition that coming out of the pandemic looking at where we are now the, and the levels of demands that are going to be placed on the service on our services a real commitment to recognizing that we need to do things differently moving forward to meet the challenges we face now and in the recovery years ahead we know we're seeing rising demand across all services whether you work in primary care social care voluntary sector services the complexity the demographics of the individuals the intensity of the services that you're having to provide, we know that it is a level of challenge that's been unprevented. So the Health Secretary spoke about the next steps of reform intended to move the NHS forward in a way which is increasingly patient centred and really put systems at the heart of that. So we have to focus on the prevention agenda, how we build a care service, a national health service, a national health and care service but puts prevention at the heart of it. If we are to really change that demand curve in future years, and it's that fit for the future kind of analogy, then we have to put more investment up front into prevention. To be able to do that, we need to make sure that as a system, we really are testing the value for money and the productivity aspects that I've just described. Have we got the right things at, for a population the level, level of the black country, the right things at neighborhood and borough level, so that we can invest ahead as much as possible in that prevention agenda. We need to meet, move to personalisation, which is what some of you described in the first question that we asked, that we deliver more personalised care, we empower patients, we use technology so people can see where they are on that care journey, and we offer the opportunity if people haven't got the digital skills to be able to access the digital skills to be able to use digital health care in a different way, that we use digital health care in a way that's not intrusive to patients, but enables us to be able to support them more in their homes and rural Wolverhampton are doing some fantastic work around um, virtual wards that's exactly pointing us as to that. But we have to make sure in these challenging times that our performance is the very best it can be and that we make sure for our black country people that we're striving to be the very best health and care system we can be, that um, our workforce feels supported to be able to do that, that our workforce and our roles and our opportunities in our system for our workforce are attractive to a more diverse community and that in our leadership as we start to develop that people can start to come through and we see more diversity in our leadership and the way we work. Next slide please. But most importantly is our people. And that's the bit I'm most passionate about, that we're building healthier and happy communities for local people. We're making the black country the best place to work for our staff. 
and that we're creating a system that is fit for the future for our partners. And for me, this is our system. This is not just one organisation system anymore. This is a coming together. It's a, a change in the way we work for all of us and all of our partners are committed to working closely together and that's been great in the conversations I've heard so far and been part of. But what we need now to do is to start to shape our priorities, listen to you, no matter where, what, how you've come to this session today, whether you're a patient, a voluntary group or a member of staff, um, in how we shape what we do in the future. Next slide, please. So the third question is, what would be your list, your top of your list to make the black country the best place to work? So if you've got some thoughts on that, please do pop them in the chat. Put that question three, put that three comment uh, next to it so I can see them. But I'm going to go back uh, to question two first, and we've got some comments on question two. So what would be your priority area for, for improving the wider determinants of health? And uh, thank you for all the comments again. A warm and safe roof over people's heads and meaningful employment. Thank you for that. That builds on that housing and employment a priority for the integrated care partnership. Equitable and fair access to health and care services. Early years focus on the principle that we can make differences to impact future populations. Uh, staff teams collab collaborating regardless of organisational boundaries. Clear air. Now, one of the things that we are pro going through the process at the moment of developing is our green strategy as a system. And certainly clear air is absolutely part of that because we recognise that the environment has a huge contribution to make in terms of people's housing, uh, people's health. Education, I can see in the comments, improve relationships between all organisations, local authority, NHS, other stakeholders. Narrowing the digital divide, supporting children and young people to thrive. Care for the elderly needs improvement. Services enabled to provide the time and support required for the elderly. And I'll pick one more comment out if I can find one. Um, let me just pick one more out. Um, Mobilisation of patients once admitted to hospital um, and the support of carers, etc. in that journey. So thank you for that. So please put your comments in the chat for question three, which is what make your list, top of your list to make the black country a best place to work. And we'll go on to the next slide, please. Making a difference. So these are the things we are focusing on as a black country. You have seen from some of the measures, supporting people to live healthier for longer, understanding the drivers for that healthy life expectancy. That people are most vulnerable will get what they need to stay healthy, working really closely with our communities. More opportunities for healthy life choices and more investment in services. And certainly there's national commitments around mental health, primary care and community services that we are as a system absolutely committed to meeting. Care is personalised, bringing in that digital agenda. And we've already discussed there will be better access to housing, employment training, and the whole green agenda around air quality, but also safer green spaces. Next slide, please. Making the black country the best place to work. So our workforce, you absolutely know what's important. You know what works and we want you to know that we care about you and we want to listen to you and listen to what's important to you. More opportunity for workforce to develop, that we have roles that are fit for the future, that are attractive for people to want to work in, that we have flexibility in the way people can work those roles um, and that you know, flexible opportunities are there if people want them. More options to support workforce to balance their home and work lives. The whole COVID experience, I guess, is a good example of that. In some aspects, it's been brilliant that people have been able to work from home for some. Others haven't. They've been coming to work every day working in incredibly difficult circumstances in PPE, for example. But it's about finding that right balance and learning from some of the experiences that we've endured over the last two years. But people can move and work around the system. And that's definitely feedback I'm getting that people maybe don't want to sit in one role for the next 30 years or in one organisation or maybe in one profession. They want to be able to dual train. 
and that our workforce get the support they need to do the best job they can. Very immediate focus on health and well-being, but recognising there are other contributing factors to that. Good IT, for example, good leadership, and those are all important as we start to develop them. Next slide, please. And our role, I guess, is to build a system that recognises that and is fit for the future, that puts place and neighbourhood at the heart of what we're trying to deliver, that we're embracing that technology, that our partners are working well together, and that we're developing our infrastructure to be able to support that. And most importantly, as I've said, every black country pound that we spent, we're investing as much as we can in local frontline services. Next slide, please. So question four is what might be some of the barriers to achieving what we've just described? So again, your opportunity to think about some of the challenges you see in what we're trying to describe. So I'm going to try and pick up some of the question three comments if there's been any posted so far. Um, so question three was what would be top of your list to make the black country the best place to work? Thank you for all your comments. Improve career progression pathways get the work-life balance right, inclusive and responsive leadership that genuinely values and supports staff, a no-blame culture and generous training opportunities, a system that uses shared care records is where we need to be, employ and value local people who live, work in and use the services and value and support the third sector, Every three months, employers invite an NHS keynote speaker specialist to talk a specialist topic like a PHSE day at school. Um, having all the resources I need to do my job well, feeling like I'm making a difference to people in the black country and I'm listened to and have development opportunities. Compassionate managers, accountability, HR support for PCNs, and it's really important that we don't lose sight of that as PCNs develop their workforce. So thank you for those comments and we'll pick up the question, the answers to the question on barriers in a moment. Next slide, please. Jonathan, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Um, so just before we get to uh, the next question and thanks ever so much for all your comments so far, which have been really terrific. I mentioned in the first workshop that we've made a number of appointments to our integrated care board. This slide shows the non-executive directors that have been appointed to the board. Their role, like mine, uh, is to hold the system and the executive team to account. Uh, those non-executives will be taking up their roles from the beginning of April, and you'll start to see them in meetings and out and about, I'm sure. Um, and I'll hand back to Mark now to talk a little about the executive appointments that have been made to the Integrated Care Board and also to look ahead to the future. Thank you. So um, we are in the process of appointing to the exec roles. Jonathan's appointed to the non-exec. So we've made the first three appointments, as you may have seen. So delighted that Ananta Davi will be joining us um, at some time in April to become the chief medical officer. Uh, Ananta is a CAM psychiatrist by background, is currently the medical director over in Lincolnshire. Many of you will know Sally Roberts already, who was successful in being our, our chief nursing officer, and Sally's got an excellent reputation in the system already. And then Tom Jackson will be our chief finance officer, and Tom Jackson is currently chief finance officer at Dudley Group, but he's, the majority of his career has been set, spent in CCGs and has done a lot of work around healthier populations and some a lot of work around healthy cities. So really looking forward to working with all of those. Uh, we are out to advert for the final three roles now. That's the Chief People Officer to really uh, promote the agenda we've just been talking about, about our supporting our workforce. A Chief Operating Officer, because even with the change from CCG to Integrated Care Board, there are still a lot of statutory functions that the ICB will need to fulfil and commission, still need to commission primary care, for example. We'll still have regulators that we need to make sure that we are um, providing the right information to. And then the final role is a Chief Equality and Innovation Officer, and that is to make sure that as we develop our integrated care partnership in conjunction with our directors of public health and all of our other partners, that we're putting this 
um, healthier outcomes and health inequalities right at the forefront of our thinking. And there's a lot of work to develop information, decision making, changes to services, and that role will be absolutely key in leading that with our partners. Next slide, please. So if we look ahead, what's going to happen next? Well, the first thing I think to say is, and it's easy to forget this, uh, because we talk a lot about the opportunities that integration in this new way of working presents, is that we have a group of staff that we absolutely need to support who are going through their second change, I think, in two years. So the four CCGs merged and came together and came down to one, and they're now going through a change again. So we need to remember that and absolute support and recognise the the challenges that brings for our CCG staff in becoming the ICB and to safe land that. And that includes the transfer of West Birmingham because there are boundary transfers as part of this uh, change that will happen on the 1st of July happening across the country. And what West Birmingham was previously part of our ICS will transfer to Birmingham and Solly Hall integrated care system. There's a lot of work gone in to make sure that that transition is happening and a particular thank you to the GPs in West Birmingham who've been working so closely with ourselves and our Birmingham colleagues. We recognise that this can't all just be about health so in the next month we're going to bring together health and care leaders, local authority leaders to start to discuss about how we develop that true integrated care partnership and actually we'll take your feedback today into that meeting as part of those discussions as we start to develop our priorities. There's still more guidance to come. There's a guidance in a number of aspects as we form. We're now what some three months away from the deadline day, but as you know, the act is still going through parliament and the House of Lords. It was, I think it had a, another reading in the House of Lords just a few weeks ago with some amendments proposed. So you would, as you would expect, we haven't got all the guidance yet, but we're really clear that wherever possible, we want to start working in shadow form and in the way that we would expect to work as a system. So we are already starting to continue conversations about how partners are represented on the Integrated Care Partnership, Integrated Care Board, but the formal process for actually nominating them and selecting them, we may not know until later date and communication and these events and the engage other engagement events that we are doing are absolutely key and the comms team are working brilliantly at the moment under a significant amount of pressure to bring these events so that we can talk to you so we'll continue to update stakeholders on ICS developments we've got the bi-monthly healthy futures newsletter another ICS development workshop on the 19th of May 2022 which is actually focusing on how systems will take action to improve the health and care of local people. But numerous other events will be taking place as well. So a lot still to go on over the next three months. Um, and we obviously watch the progress of the Act through the House of Lords and the House of, Par the, the House of Lords and House of Commons very closely. Next slide, please. So we hope you found that helpful. We've certainly found the information in the chat hugely hugely helpful and we will collate all of your comments because I think they're absolutely brilliant and we will share them back to you on the Healthy Futures website. Uh, I'm just asking maybe ask one of my comms colleagues how I pick out some of the questions whether did you spot any questions coming through or was it all just responses to the, the kind of comment the questions that we asked? There were a few questions that did, did come out, Mark, um, but unfortunately that they, they do seem to have fallen through within the um, within the other questions. OK, so what we'll do then is when we collate these after the session, we will pick those very individual questions that people have had out. And when we publish the link to this recording and the responses, we'll lift them out and show them separately. So if you have asked a question, we'll make sure that we do respond. So watch out for the link and the questions in the comments uh, being published. But I think on behalf of Jonathan and myself, a huge thank you for taking the time to attend today. A huge thank you for your input and your comments. We genuinely want this system to be a success for our workforce, our partners, and most importantly, our population. There's a huge amount to do. 
what I hear is an appetite to work differently and to do things differently to address the challenges that we face. And ultimately, I hope to celebrate what is a great integrated care system for the black country. So thank you for taking the time today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your comments and thank you to the comms team uh, for organising this. Thanks a lot.